Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to The Truth Unveiled. This is your host, Drew Keaton, along with D. Moss. And as promised, this is part two of the Atlanta child murder. And on, um, without a further ado, we're going to get right into it. Um, we're going to let the introduce themselves as well. Last week, we did introductions, and we got into it. After they do the introductions, I'm going to do a little recap about what we talked about, and we're going to get right into it. But first up on the mic, we have my man, Dwayne Hendricks, who is the spokesman for Wayne Williams um, Freedom Project. Um, and he is a, a rapper extraordinaire, an author, um, just many, a, a boxing coach, whatever. I mean, just many, many things he does. So I want you to introduce yourself, tell the people about you um who you are and also give me a fun fact that's that we don't really know about you and then give me a fact about um the land of child murder that people the ordinary or average person wouldn't know or nobody knows okay um my name is Dwayne Hendrix as he says uh you said a fun fact about me and about the Atlanta child murders is that what you said yes yeah. Uh, I wouldn't call it too much of a fun fact, but just the fact that nobody would know about the Atlanta child murders. Okay. Uh, there were like uh, 30 more murders that took place in the city of Atlanta. Um, within the next year and a half after Wayne Williams was uh, convicted. And they just stopped talking about it on the news. You know, okay. That's a that's a very important thing that you know um, nobody seems to talk about when they talk about this in documentaries and news footage. That the the killings really didn't stop with Wayne's incarceration. Mm -hmm. So what's yeah. the fact about this show? Last name Hendrix, Jimmy's third cousin, the great guitarist. Okay. Right. Did you pick up any of those guitar skills? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's just vocal, right? Lyrical just load. A pen, just a pen. <laughs> Author, I write books. The pen is amazing, you know. Children's books, you know, spiritual books, no. uh, music, but not the guitar. Okay. All right. So we had a, a modest introduction from Mr. Hendrix because he could have <laughs> talked about he could have had a 20 minute introduction just as long as our next guest could have a, a 30 40 minute introduction his name is alex barber he's a cold case consultant um tell us a little bit who you are um alex and give us a fun fact about yourself and also a fact about the atlanta child murders uh well first off drew uh I'm, i've always labeled myself as a nobody uh you know I try to be as modest as possible uh though the people that know me may disagree with that um, I, <laughs> Dwayne's laughing. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I'm the cold case consultant. I took this on instead of being a, a PI and being isolated to one, one region or one state, I have the option to be able to travel around and look into these cases under a rather larger banner. Um, so I'm not as restricted as much, uh, as far as uh, myself, something that nobody knows is that I read backwards. I, I read from right to left. And most of the time I read my books from the end to the beginning. So I, I know the finale before before I even get started. Uh, it's one of those odd things I've done since I was a child. I mean, I, I, I can read uh, left to right as a typical person would, but I find myself reading right to left usually. Um, as far as an unknown fact, I mean, there's a uh, Zodiac letter that was sent out. Uh, this is connected to that. Okay, I'll explain. In 1978, I believe it was July, and it, it discussed, you know, it connects the OCCK to the at kid murders by disclosing the I Am Athletic, which was posted on the July 1st, 1978 poster. Um, mm -hmm. The only person ever to use that, I discussed that last week. And then on, on later down in the uh, letter, he talks about scotch tape uh, and leaving it at the crime scenes. And, you know, it, he says it belongs to him, uh, even though even the police have it, it belongs to him. And uh, the scotch tape, everybody was thinking it was scotch tape to use on Christmas gifts, you know, or packages. Uh, if you go into the FBI files at the Richardson and Terrell crime scene, they found a 10 and a half inch reel that's called a scotch reel. 
it was left at the crime scene. Uh, oh. Dwayne, Dwayne can, uh, can tell you about that. Yeah, it's uh, it says his way of linking almost a year and a half in advance the Atkid murders to the OCCK murders he had just left uh, in 77. So, but that's that's something a lot of people don't know about mm -hmm. that letter and also the crime scene what's in the FBI files. Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna get into the, this this um this fun fact thing. My name is Drew Keaton. Of uh, facts, all 52 states. Um, in any criminal case, um, you have to, as a client, you can hire in a private detective or a criminal investigator. It's by law. It's on the books. A lot of people don't know that. Also, um, about uh, Atlanta child murders, a fact that I found out that um, Dwayne Hendricks and Alex um, um, Barber are going to blow your minds off with this documentary, and they are fighting for the truth, and they are true fighters. So that's the fact I learned. So, <laughs> so let's get let's get into it. I'm gonna get real into it. Um, let's go back to, um, and I know um, when we get to Alex, it, there's gonna born. We're gonna be talking about and other murders and stuff. But let's get back into the Atlanta child murder. And Dwayne, since you from Georgia, like explain really like. Um, the deep south, that whole climate of the deep south, um, Atlanta suburb, suburb and um, these actually where these kids were killed. That like explain the differences in like the tension, um, whether it be racial tensions or the tension that went on during that time of these murders. Uh, well, tensions were very high because at this particular time. Um, what we had is we kind of like had a tradition transition from the old South or the old good old boy uh, hierarchy to, um, especially in Atlanta, becoming a city where you actually had a uh, a black mayor elected, um, black police chief, black fire chief, and basically the political climate was starting to change to where there were all of uh, these people who had been disenfranchised in the past, especially in Southern cities, beginning to take uh, positions of power. So because of that, um, it definitely created a lot of disdain for the people that wanted to hold on to the good old Confederacy and um, it was shown in the cooperation that law enforcement had in a lot of these cases. Right. right. Do 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 um do you think back to piggyback off what you just said, the cooperation of cases? Do you think that it was just a simple fact that these were um, kids, um, black kids, um, that were killed? Do you think? The, the attention and the details toward the case really wasn't paid more attention unless they were into the fact that it, if it was Caucasian kids? I think it, it was definitely a difference um, because of not only just race, but economic standing in the community. You know, um, when you look at most of the children that had been taken and murdered, they were from low income housing you know, housing projects, things of that nature. So um, from the standpoint of um, what was happening in the city, you didn't have the people that potentially could have been making a stink about it when it first started happening. You know, they really weren't affected by it, you know. So you, you basically, Within the race itself, there's always been a class struggle, especially in a city like Atlanta. You know, um, you have people that are tied in to the structure and then people that are outside, of, you know. So had this been some, you know, some of the children that potentially, you know, like, uh, for instance, with Wayne Williams, um, the reason why it became such a big deal when he became prosecuted and some of the people in the city were making a stink about it um, was because his family were one of the families that was tied in. Okay. Um, Wayne grew up- When you say tied, right, when you say tied in, like, elaborate more when you say tied in. Um, he grew up knowing uh, Martin Luther King III, 
Okay. You know, he, he grew up uh, knowing a lot of the people that were um, connected to politics and a part of that whole civil rights struggle and everything else. I mean, he he was around Andy Young when he was like 14 years old, you know. Um, he was actually in Jet Magazine, I think Ebony and Jet Magazine when he was like 14, 15 years old. Mm-hmm. And Andy Young was quoted as saying that he may have been the smartest kid he ever met in his life, you know. So, um, he was tied in in that regard to where people of influence uh, in the city of Atlanta knew him as a child. Right. right. And, and his uh, father was a school teacher, also a reporter, wrote for the newspaper and all right. that. So, right. so at, during that, um, with the tension, Alex, how, um, like, what would you constitute? Um, like what a serial killer, because they deemed him as a serial killer. Like what constitutes as a serial serial killer and why wouldn't Wayne Williams have committed all these murders in your mind and what you know? Well, typically speaking, a serial killer is going to have um, certain traits. I mean, they've always had the, the trifecta. You know, they grow up, they, they're usually bedwetters, uh, they're fire starters, and they're abusive to animals. Now, that's, that's usually your, your uh, status quo. Uh, but if you dig into that deeper, most of them have a, uh, a troubled childhood or have been traumatized. Um, you know, like Klein himself, he, he had lost two siblings by the age of, of 12, I believe, almost 13, um, two younger brothers. And, you know, when you, you get into situations like that, you're, you're at that age where you're a sponge. Okay. And you're learning as, as you're getting into, you know, um, adolescence and uh you know puberty and whatnot and your body starts to change the chemicals in your body starts to change you start to absorb these these things that are happening to you and you can either take it and and you know turn into a positive or turn into a negative um and wayne i mean wayne came from a a two-parent household um you know they were successful they they were active in the community um he was highly uh, highly intelligent. I mean, like like Dwayne just said, this this kid was ahead of his ahead of his curve. Um, you know, he was doing this stuff where he was promoting his music. Um, you know, he had his own radio station in his basement. You know, these people, he told them he had a radio station, and they didn't believe him. They'd show up, and there's a radio station in his basement. Right. Yeah. You know, um, he, he's he just he, he doesn't fit the format of a, of your your standard typical serial killer. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I don't think there's a hundred percent format for any of them. If you take, you know, Dennis Rader to BTK, Ted Bundy, um, you know, uh, John Wayne Gacy, um, you know, some of the famous one, the Green River, um, they don't all match the same. Uh, I forgot to say the, the structure is not the same. Their their childhood is, isn't the same, but there are similarities. And I mean, it's like a it's a perfect storm. Right. To create. To answer my, my, my question before I, what I was going to ask you is, is there an FBI FBI profile and a profile in a, a local police department that will constitute what a what a um, a serial killer is? So you kind of just kind of answered it a little bit. That was my next question. Too. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the standard. To be honest uh, with you, Drew. But but in this case, back to back to. But in this case. If you look at it, this, um, going back to what Dwayne was saying with detention, that's why I had him start off with that, with the de- with detention and hearing the background of Wayne Williams, and seeing how in 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 actually the details, if there were details of these murders, um, it doesn't constitute anything that he would do. Why did the police fall into that, and the FBI fall into that? Is this back to race now? Well, you got to understand at that time, the city was was about to go up in flames. I mean, you had this whole the KKK thing was going on. Um, you know, the black community was was on their heels. Their children were being taken and, and being massacred uh, and then laid out in the, for the public to find. Um, you know, and then you have these mocking letters being sent to the, the local uh, law enforcement. You know, preachers are being called at, at, the, at the church. You know, employers are being called. The child's calling saying, I'm almost I'm almost dead. Please help me. You know, there's there's these things that are going on that, um, you know, it, it was a very, you know, tenuous time. There was there was a lot of things going on at one time. And uh, the black community, if they had they convicted a Caucasian 
uh, individual, I believe the city would have would have bur would burnt burnt down. I mean, they would have probably lit the city on fire. And you know, it, and, and at that time, I could see why they felt that way. I mean, you get to the point to where you're you got a bat patrol. You're walking around with bats trying to protect your own children. You know, and it's it, when it gets to that degree, something they should have. Uh, the law enforcement should have somehow intervened and done something a little bit different than what they did. You know, right. it, it definitely was was being fueled by racism. You right. know, nobody trusted anybody else. You know, the black community didn't trust law enforcement. Law enforcement didn't trust the black community. The KKK was involved. You know, the blacks definitely didn't trust the KKK. But, uh, you know, individuals coming around, you know, in their area and neighborhood. Um, you know, and it's just, it was a perfect storm. And, and Dwayne, you know, like Dwayne said, um, Wayne Williams got caught up in the middle of it. Mm. He was at the he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. I know that's a cliche, but I mean it, it pretty much matches up here. Right. So it it back to to this question for Dwayne. So on, on that note, as as he got caught up, um, and we know how how could you frame um this framework for the ATL when you look at the the whole piece when you talk about pedophile and all of the stuff that was going on. Did that have a, a, a play a part in all of this? What yeah. the uh pedophile rings? Absolutely. Can you so can you go a little bit more into that and how like how it played a part into that? Well because it it made it very easy for um someone if they wanted to victimize children them having the knowledge of these pedophile rings and where they were operating out of, it made it very easy to be able to prey on them. You know, um, obviously if a child is in that state to where they are going to visit um, places that would be considered um, <laughs> pedophile hotbeds they're very vulnerable it's would, would, you, would you go so much to say and both of you can answer this question that um because of the cover-up when you get into this is do you think city officials and government is involved when it comes to pedophilia absolutely um i don't know if they're directly involved i i haven't found proof myself in the files um, but I mean, I believe that they were aware of what was going on. Absolutely. You have a guy getting on on the evening news telling telling them that he's bringing kids to his house and having sex mm -hmm. with them as they're interviewing him, um, you know, and then it, nobody does anything. I mean, I think eventually he was arrested and prosecuted. But right. I mean, it, had I been there, I would have slapped cuffs on him immediately. Right. You know, read his Miranda rights and took him in. Um, but they I don't understand the thought process at at that time in Atlanta. I don't I don't I don't understand it. Yeah. And and that's why I asked that question, because it seems it seems to be like like we are stressed and we, we, we know that if you know the history of it, that there was a lot of things going on. Um, and this is the pedophile, the racial tension. This is nothing to be exempt to what's going on now. Now, back to well, both. Let of me, you let me uh, make a point about that real quick, Drew, so that the listeners can understand. Um, you asked me and I said, absolutely. Um, if you go back and you look at some of the news footage, um, Lee Brown, who was the public safety commissioner at the time, which was basically like the acting role of the chief of police in Atlanta, got on the news and said that they saw no evidence of these children being, um, or any type of uh, sexual deviance or anything like that taking place with these murders. and. Some of these children had their penis cut off. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. You know, they were mutilated. So, yes. Yeah. So I mean, you know, he got on TV and said that, knowing that it was certain things that was happening. Yeah. You know. Now, was it was it to, to protect the citizens of um, um, that area in Atlanta because of people being roused up, uh, or was uh, it just that they were protecting somebody? I think it was multiple layers to it. I think that what they were trying to do from a public relations standpoint is that they were trying to make sure that uh, certain information 
didn't get out because the city was already in an uproar. Right. You understand? Like Alex was saying, you got um, Techwood and Techwood Homes. Um, you had brothers coming out in, 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 in night with baseball bats. Mm -hmm. saying that they were going to make sure that this didn't happen in their community right. you know so it was it was um something that from a political standpoint um it almost some a person can almost think that it was engineered to sabotage or to make it look like the people who were taking over the city were inadequate to be able to protect the citizens of the city. Mm -hmm. So from the standpoint of the politics that was involved with it, that's why you see some of the things that took place from a cover-up type standpoint. You know what I mean? Right. right. So, so let, me, let me ask you this, and both of you might know this, um, more so Dwayne. How many people benefited politically because of the Atlanta child murders? I know that's a, 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 a sketchy question, but how many people you think benefited, like careers were made off of it? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I, I, you know, it's funny when we talk about this stuff, I, I, I think the truth unveiled and the way I'm formulating the question is, it's not that I'm putting anybody on the spot, but I think this is very important because when you look at what goes on in this country, it's like the same old song every day right. and for the last 70 and 80 years. This, this right. is what it is, so. Okay, so when we do the documentary, I'll release the name of the celebrity attached, right? Mm -hmm. But, when I first got involved in 2013, I sat down for about an hour and a half with the personal assistant of one of the most powerful people in the music industry at that point, right? And this personal assistant had been reading through some of the police investigative files, Brady files, things of that nature. Right. Told me, this is what she told me. She said, people in Atlanta don't even realize how much they owe Wayne Williams for the city that they have. Mm, real talk. That is correct. Real, she said, real talk. Wayne mm. Williams is like, uh, what did she say? She said, Wayne Williams got crucified for this city. What was it, like uh, $4.3 million, Dwayne, that the city was awarded? 4.6 million the city was awarded um, after his, his persecution. And, and and that's because of they thought it was a well done job because they put a monster behind and that is correct. Wow. Yeah. It on the head was, drill. Yeah, and that you was know, only we, that was only part of it. Um, yes. you know, uh, a lot of other stuff went into the development of the airport in Atlanta. And that's wow. why the person wow, that's why the person um that told me what they told me at that time. That's why they told me what they told me. And um, what people who don't live in the city of Atlanta probably don't know about the city of Atlanta is that now Atlanta has the busiest airport in the world. Right. right. You know, and a large part of that is because of what took place in the city of Atlanta after Wayne Williams was uh, prosecuted and indicted and went to prison. Wow. Exactly. I mean, you, you got to remember, too, that the local DA did not want to prosecute uh, Wayne Williams. He said that openly. It's it's in the uh, the newspaper press releases right. and in the um, the, the news, uh, the media themselves actually speaking to him on the mic. They have that. You know, he's he did not want to, uh, to, to to go forward with it. And they I believe the FBI stepped in and said, look, you know, we're going to we're going to do it uh, one way or another. Either you do it or well, the attorney general is going to do it. Well, yeah, what, what happened in that instance is that George Bush Sr. came to the governor's mansion and it was uh, a benefit taking place at the governor's mansion. And George Bush Sr. told Lewis Slayton at that time that if he didn't prosecute Wayne Williams for the Atlanta child murders, that he would have the U.S. Attorney General do it. Wow. wow. You know, y'all, you guys are dropping bombs right now. Yeah. Nothing you see in the documentaries, nothing you see, yeah. and I, obviously for certain reasons, because 
Um, I, I think, and listen, no disrespect to the documentaries that's already been made. I just think it's more to pacify people's thought process because we still have people to say he still did it after they see the documentary and it's wrong. Is this true that they tried to give him a plea deal and tried to give him a million dollars? Um, I, I'm sorry. Uh, let me let me let me stop. Let me stop. Let, let's retract that. I feel like I'm, okay. Is 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 this true that they had an inclination that they know that he didn't commit all 22 murders? I, that's a bad. That is correct. They definitely know. <laughs> I mean, you look. You got. You got to understand. You know, with his name being offered up. Um, by the individuals I identified uh, in December of 1980, which is nearly six months prior to the bridge incident. I mean, he was already on the radar and, you know, the, the, he was handing these uh, flyers out or paying kids to hand these flyers out in the neighborhoods. And that's how I believe uh, Klein and MS got a hold of one and it had his information on there. And they knew that now here's the funny part is that they knew that he traveled by night his operations at night, you know, he was, he was basically a storm chaser. You know, he was doing these crime scenes. He actually, it's in the doc, it's in the documentation that he would beat the police to the crime scene because he'd get wind of it. Right. People, people would talk to him and inform him say, Hey man, you know, a couple blocks down, there's a house fire and he'd show up first. But then they use that radio in his house. I think, and he was following. That's correct. Really wanted to be a promoter and stuff. And I mean, yeah, but, yeah. They use that against him, Drew. You got to understand whenever they took him in, there's like, oh, you know, he's impersonating a police officer because he has a CB and a radio and lights in his car. He was trying to get to the scene before they would to, make, to, to get the crack story. You know, he wouldn't be able to be the first one to report it. His father was into that. This is this is a family, yeah. you know, right. uh, he, people don't look at it that way. Yeah, you, you, said, know? Something wow. wrong, you said something ironically just now, impersonating a police officer, but we'll get to that later. Oh yeah, there's a lot behind that one. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot behind. So let, let let let's let's ask of this, um, because like I said, it's it's hard to like you guys are dropping gems right now, and it's hard to 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 get into some stuff, um, without taking away from when you really start dropping the, the gems next month with the documentary. But let's let you mentioned MS. For those who didn't see last week, who is MS and Klein? Who is how are they in Okay, well, MS and, and Klein are childhood friends. Um, Klein was born in Brooklyn, New York. MS was born in Cook County, uh, Chicago, Illinois. Um, they are associated. Klein actually dated two first cousins, or excuse me, the eldest first cousin of uh, MS. Um, that's that's how they got even closer as they got older. Uh, they joined the uh, the Navy together within one month of of, of each other. Um, you know, MS went on within nine months to join the Marine Corps, was stationed in California uh, for a year and a half, and then was deployed to Okinawa. He was on the front lines as a uh, HA2, which is a hospital apprentice two, which means that, you know, he, they said, they have it on record in his uh, military records that he had up to 1,500 cadavers that he had had, had his hands on or, or had interacted with. Mm. You know, he was on the front lines. He was, uh, he was injured. Uh, he was actually discharged with a medical, uh, you know, he, he had, and then his, his first course is ironic. His first course when he, when he went to college at USC, um, was, uh, dissecting a cadaver. Mm. <laughs> so, and then he had some connections with some other famous murders that, that I've, uh, you know, I've disclosed to you behind the scenes, yeah. um, that, that, you know, this guy, he had, he, when there's a mutilation involved, when there's genitalia removed, there's mm. feet removed, there's hands removed, there's ears removed. Um, I can guarantee you he's involved directly. That was his calling card. Now, when you have, you know, a shooting or an asphyxiation or, or strangulation, that would be Klein nine out of 10 times. Yeah. I mean, it's, you'll know when they're, when they're hunting together and you know, when they're, when they're separate. Wow. Um, Cause yeah, they were, they were hunting, like I said, for six decades. Wow. And, and once you link the dots and I lay it out, it just, it feeds itself. It's just, it's yeah. just so easy to follow. Um, but yeah, but MS, you know, he, they, they were friends, um, you know, they were friends through their life as, as they grew older, MS died, I believe in, uh, 93. And it was funny as a Sucreville writer, um, the letters that he was antagonizing Paul Freshhour in prison with, mm -hmm. uh, with the Zodiac Christmas card, they stopped that year. Um, if you, if you get technical, some people say they went on to 2000, but I dug into it. They stopped that year. 
because um, there was two hand, two forms of handwritings in in those letters. If you if you ever Google them, the Circle Hill Writer letters. Um, and then you know after that, you can see where he actually takes um, a decline. Uh, you know, as far as the crime scenes, you know what's how, how detailed they are, and also in the correspondence after the crime, the letters to the police, letters to the family, phone calls. You can see he's getting older. Uh, you, you can tell, yeah, like I said, or like last week, you can tell the script is getting shakier. Um, you know, he's getting he's getting up in his eighties. So at that point in time, you know, the two thousands, late two thousands, he's up in his eighties now. Wow. So. You know, Father Time catches everybody, even even the criminals. Wow. So it so um, explaining what Alex said. So um, when young males are missing their genitals, you know, you hear the story. Oh, with the CDC in Atlanta was involved in that. Is that some truth or is that a myth? Or uh, or are people just weakening, throwing things out that have nothing to do with anything to get your focus on really what happened, like how you and Alex are really playing, pinpointing what's going on? I um, myself have found zero documentation that, that validates that. I mean, you have there, you know, they say that there was um, pen sites on, on some of the children's penises and whatnot. Now, you, you have to understand that these people that we're talking about, they were into torture. They kept children up to two, three, even four weeks at a time. They fed the children. You know, they, they tortured them. They had burn marks. Some of them had burn marks. Some of them had, you know, um, you had marks of being uh, tied up, you know, their ankles, their wrist, their, around their neck. You know, they, 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 was, they, was, they weren't – when I think of them having pin sites on their genitalia, I don't think of it being a medical procedure. Right. Uh, I think of it more being some form of torture. Uh, behind it. And it definitely wasn't the CDC, you know, collecting uh, young Negro males, uh, whatever you want to call it, to try to, to, to cure cancer. I mean, that's just, that's another one of those crazy things that, that flies out there, in my opinion. I mean, that's, Dwayne might have a different view on that, uh, but I found no documentation that validates that. Right. So w when you look at the, 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 the different murders, because we talked about last week that there's possibly a connection um, in different states of the murder. So you look at one of them, you, you, you do see a common thread. You do, you see women and you see children and you also see white children as well. Is, 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 is that their MO as well? Was it, was, was it their despise for children and women? Well, you have to understand if you look at the freeway phantom letter itself it says this opens up saying uh, this is insensitivity towards people especially women that's that's the first two lines in the letter if you google it um you know the zodiac you know he had stayed away from discussing children until the paul stein letter on october 13 1969. the last column says you know i'm gonna blow out a, shoot out a tire and start picking off kitties as they come hopping off or bouncing off mm. you know that was his first incline to to, to harming children um, and then he ran with it. So, I mean, and then, you know, initially it was lovers lanes, you know, permissible, uh, teenagers, you know, right. young girls and boys doing what they shouldn't be doing at that time, you know, and then you go out and you start hunting, you know, the black community, um, you know, the poor and, and they justify what they're doing in their correspondence. They're trying to tell you why they're doing it. You know, if you go to like the, um, the OCCK letter from Alan and, and, and Frank, who's his friend. Um, and then you go to like the uh, Lindy Sue Belcher letter here in Lancaster area, you know, where the top part's written by one person, the second part's written by a second. If you go to the Act Kid letter, um, you know, they, they talk about Vietnam. All oh, Vietnam messed my head up and, you know, mm -hmm. we came back and now we're, we're doing a favor by taking out the, uh, the black community's children because they, they won't suffer. You know, they, they won't be there to not, not be able to, to, you know, be productive in the community. Um, it's just their, their mindset was just sick. It was, it was completely crazy, but they, they evolved their MO to keep the police off of them. You know, they would move to, they'd leave you a clue, uh, you know, a crumb, um, hoping you would track them and they would even come back and rub it in your face, you know, with the Zodiac letter, when he came back with the exorcist after leaving DC, basically told him he had been there and nobody picked it up. Yeah. Nobody associated any of it. So they're 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 baiting law enforcement along the way, and, and no one just no one picked up on it. Yeah. So, but they hated women and children, absolutely. And and as and as we give them credit because they were they were very very smart. And I want to oh, yeah. this too because I always come back to this. Um, was Klein 
a Mason? Uh, Klein, there is uh, some reports of him actually being a Mason, having connections in the Mason. Um, okay. Okay. So there is the the. the uh, I mean, I would hate to say that that's the reason that he got away with this, right? Because you know, I don't want to. I, I hate speculating anything, Drew. Right. Um. But but yes, there is there has been some uh, documentation I have viewed that said that he could have possibly been part of the Mason the Lodge. That's correct. And and no way do I want to speculate either and say anything. But I I mean, history tells us the deep roots. Um. I I mean, even Dwayne talks about some of that stuff. Um, in, in his books too, with the connections and the symbols and, and Masonic and, and um, rituals and, 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 and stuff like that. So it, to me, it seems like there was a connection and certain people knew about it and it had to be internal. And even when you talk about um, with the using of the knives and the, the, you know, what was performed on some of these kids, looks like it was, say, you know, a smart person doing it, but also Santanic too. Getting big and rich, you know. Uh, there's, there's been quite a few people out there, you know. Web Sleuths, um, which is where my roots began, uh, many years ago. You know, before I got serious about it, and they, they, there's a lot of people that have actually said, you know, there's some kind of, uh, you know, correlation with with satanic. And he had books. I mean, if you go to the writer McDowell um, uh, script that he wrote, it even says when he went in there, he found, you know, this encyclopedia of witchcraft was on Klein's bookshelf when he interviewed him. You know, and he had his zodiac chart on the wall. So there was there was a lot of information that was up there um, that, that actually connects with the crimes and how they were performed. You know, there's this three week thing like OCCK. You know, he says, yeah, every three weeks, you know, it's always three weeks, three weeks that the trees are going to bloom. Put that in the, in the newspaper. You know, if you go back to the Texarkana murders after Chicago, they call the reporter. And I just I just located the letter. No one ever knew that there was a letter written by them uh, at all. I just got my hands on it last week, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna expose that in the documentary too. Yeah. But but anyhow, uh, it says right in there, expect a murder in three weeks. If you go back to the 1978 uh, letter, uh, the Channel Nine, it says right in it, in the next three weeks, <laughs> I'm gonna commit these murders. You know, the, uh, Elridge Cleaver. You know, uh, Chief Piggy Gates. You know, the previous uh, chiefs that were in San Francisco, chief of police. So it's always three weeks. And if you go back and you associate that with like the, the moon, the lunar part of it, you know, you have and my that's my wife's department, believe it or not. Uh, yeah. She's into that big time. Um, but she she can pinpoint yeah. those, the quarter to half, you know, the full three quarter uh, moon. Three yeah, quarter, there's, yeah. yeah, there's some associated there. Absolutely. Um, right, you know, in with the him having those books on his bookshelf during the interview and that's being documented. Um, yeah, he, he definitely was into it to some degree. Okay. Would you three weeks? Three weeks would be seven, seven, seven. Jackpot. Right. I know the only know the number. Yeah. So when you when you look at a lot of the crimes and a lot of the different things that was done, and even the ciphers that Alex was able to de decode and stuff yeah. like that, when you get into sure. like esoteric information and occult knowledge, a lot of times. Um, People learn these things because they are Freemason. Right. Um, another another thing about Wayne Williams is that Wayne Williams was actually a Freemason at a very early age. And when he went into the CIA to the officers program and he experienced what he experienced, he came into the Freemasonic Lodge and walked away from it. He did the ritual that you have to do to separate yourself from the lodge mm -hmm. so um i don't know if that's something that we'll eventually talk about in the documentary but to me it doesn't have a lot of relevance into yeah. whether it's guilty or not but you know well I, I i think it's very important to um like i said i mean for the people that's listening there's only so much we can get into but I think this is very, very important because it, for me, it goes back to law enforcement um, wearing, wearing that hat against kind of like law enforcement because um, which Alex stated last show that we did that the letter that they had ahead of time and maybe some negotiations to go on why we go after Wayne had to, I mean, when you talk about shaking hands behind doors, it's not just about uh, the relationship, it's about the relationship you have with the Hispanic and the Freemason relationship 
you have to in law enforcement. And we know a lot of people that are Freemasons are in law enforcement. So we know that. So, um, it, and once again, it could have been a negotiation to calm the city down and, 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 and it could have been a, a lot of people involved in what happened, but it still, it still needs that's, to be revisited though. That, but that's one of the, that's one of the reasons why, you know, um, for the people who've been following, um, the posts and the videos that I've been putting out for a while, that's one of the reasons why I'm so hard on Dick Gregory. Mm-hmm. Because Dick Gregory is one of those people, just like um, what's his face is now the one who uh, on Trayvon's case and all of the same guy um, Chump Benjamin <laughs> Trump Chump Benjamin Trump Chump Chump, Chump. <laughs> Benjamin Chump. Um, you know those type of people get put in place to make sure what? these things kind of like get smoothed out in a way to where. It always seems to benefit the structure. You know right. what I mean? How did yeah. how did Dick Gregory how what was his role in, in, in Atlanta child murders? What you think he what, what was his major role? Because he was an uh, activist at that time, if I'm not recalling, right? He was a comedian. Okay. You know I believe he's the one that was pushing the C D C thing, wasn't he? Yeah. He's, well, he's I know right. he's a comedian, but I know you you won't call him an activist. I see you and I you will yeah. call him that. But okay, yeah. so the comedian, what was his role in this? Because he was actually pushing to prosecute Wayne Williams. Am I correct about that or am I wrong about that? No, you, he, he wasn't pushing to prosecute Wayne Williams, but he ended up um, getting involved and bringing a lot of rhetoric into the situation. <laughs> and he also, uh, he also screwed over, um, one of the parents. And that's he coming in the documentary, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I pretty much I pretty much want her to tell the world what he did to her. Wow. You know, because it's one yeah. thing when it comes it's one thing when it comes from me, but it's another thing when it comes from the person who actually lost their child. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. It, it it seems like is this safe to say that um, why right now we're talking a lot about the Atlanta child murder because it is about freeing Wayne Williams. It's also about freeing and clearing other people's names up. Is it safe to say that while, and, and we said it just a few minutes ago, while the focus was on Wayne Williams' um, decline in mass and everybody involved took advantage fully of this situation, not just in Atlanta, but across the country? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're, they, they, like I said, they have, they have these parts that are called like, uh, I call them hot spots. It's where you, you come in and, and you've taken out two or three of the children um, and it gets too hot. Media's got, got it on the front page. You got all the newspapers running around trying to you know, grab some kind of press story on it. Um, you know, people are walking the streets, holding their kids, you know, close to them. So, I mean, and, and having the, having evolved the evolution of them through, through the years, they knew this. So they would leave. They would go north or, you know, they would head east or west, um, you know, depending on what time we're talking about during this whole this whole cycle. And they'd let it calm down a little bit. You know, two, three months, people start to cool off a little bit. Press starts to ease up a little bit. You know, people start letting their kids, you know, wander a little bit more in the yard. And then they come back and nab it up again, you know. And, and then they tell you they're coming. I don't know if you ever read it or not, but the, yeah, uh, the busing yeah. letter. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm coming back in March. I'm going to take three more kids if you don't stop the forced busing. They're announcing that they've already been there because they're mm-hmm. using the word three more. And they're telling you they're coming in March to take three more. You know, and, and law enforcement, this this part angers me. I mean, this this, this part here really gets to me. And Dwayne knows. You know, if you're they're telling you what the fuck they're going to do. Excuse my language. But, well, you know, they're, they're, they're coming there. They're telling you when they're going to be there. They're telling you what they're doing. They're calling the, the Rockdale Sheriff's Department and telling you where the, the bodies of the children are. Okay. And, and, and then they're sending you letters mocking you once you find the body. Because the first time he told you, you, you were searching three quarters of a mile down the road and didn't understand. So he called you back a week later and handed your ass to you and told you to go look again. Right. And then he then you pissed him off and he added a second body there. He said, you know what? Now you're gonna find a second one. You know, and that you know, Richardson and Terrell, you have Luby Jeter. Right. You know, this is this stuff aggravates me, man. I mean, this is law enforcement supposed to intervene. They're supposed to be the stop force between the public and the criminals. 
Right, right, right. You know, and and these these people, I'll just leave it at that. I mean, well, I, law, I, I, law, law enforcement has a history of um, nepotism and high end family, whether they're qualified or not, and that's the truth around the book. So, um, why they're masterminding? You have, excuse my language, some of them out there just don't give a shit. Or well, I mean, I, as long as they I don't, don't directly affect them. You know. Correct. And, uh, trust me. I mean, I, I don't want to, 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 to down talk law enforcement. I don't. I'm not that kind of person. I mean, I have friends that are in law enforcement. You know, right. on multiple on multiple levels, uh, in my in my family. And there's, uh, I it, it just bothers me that they got to the extent that it got to as right. it, it, it elevated so quickly, and nobody intervened. I mean, everybody's pointing fingers. You know, you have these different counties involved. Nobody's sharing evidence. Everybody wants to be the hero, and, and the kids suffer. You know, the kids are the ones that are they're they're being taken and are being you know butchered and murdered, and the families have to endure this for you know forty years, forty plus years. Right. And, and and what do the law law enforcement agents do? Some of them care. I've seen it on, on some of the documentaries where they break down, tears shed. You know, and that's not fake. You can tell when somebody's sincere. Other ones they retire, take their pension, and move on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and that's that's disgusting to me and that, that 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 heats me up pretty bad yeah let me let me ask both of y'all this question i know we wound it down in time and and Dwayne can go first out of those um 30 um other individual other kids that were murdered after wayne williams was locked up how many do you think klein and them was involved in i can't i can't say for sure um how many of them that they were involved with after wayne's incarceration um, I do know that some of the people were murdered the same way. For instance, there was a uh, a 12 year old girl, I think her name was um, Sharita Jones or something like that. She was a, <laughs> she was asphyxiated. Mm. And that was like a year and a half, almost two years after Wayne went to prison. Mm. Correct. You know. So, I mean, there's they they actually left Atlanta after after Wayne was was handcuffed and put in before the trial had begun and ended. They headed north um, to a young lady by the name of Joan Webster, mm-hmm. and Zodiac actually mailed the letters out, and he he ties OCCK to that also because he uses the uh, the Better Life magazine. Um, you know, I have this printout that they had sent in for the OCCK murders that actually gives you the breakdown of how all the pedophilia is connected to the magazines, to the, wow. to the porno shops, you know, and that'll be in the documentary also. But they, you know, they tie it because he actually goes to Texas to the headquarters of the, you know, the Better Life magazine and he, and he gets one of their envelopes mm-hmm. and uses that to mail the picture of Joan Webster to her family for the $10,000 reward. Mm-hmm. So that's his way of tying these, these crimes together. There's always a clue, man, every time, everywhere. All right. Now, once once again, do you think, and this, and both you can answer this, do you think they were te- technically getting back at the system with all the murder? Uh, they said they were. <laughs> the Zodiac said he was, you know, it's, it's it's a system. He hates the system, man. You know, same way, you know, if you get down to OCCK in the letter, Alan says, yeah, you know, this is because, you know, it's not because he hates the children per se. It's because, you know, the rich, the rich part of town owes him something, you know. Uh, they they suffered their whole life. If you go into like the Joan Webster uh, letter, um, or even right here in town with Lindy uh, Sue Belcher's letter, it says right in there, the, the world owes me a living. That's the exact words he uses. Right. You know, you know they yeah, they feel like they're entitled. You know, because they were in World War II and all this stuff happened and they suffered. You know, somebody was going to pay for it. Yeah. And you know, instead of being a man about it and going after you know adult male figures. They preyed on they they preyed on children and women, which is disgusting. And, right. And, uh, yeah. And uh, another thing, another thing that me and Alex have been discussing as um, a possible hypothesis is that um, they hated pedophiles so much that they were actually killing these children that were connected to these different pedophile rings all over Atlanta mm-hmm. to bring a spotlight on the fact that, that it was going yeah. on and it was so rampant. Wow. Like it that's, was, that's like it was the, really yeah. bad. It was really yeah. bad and really out in the open. How right. bad it was bad. 
And you guys are going to tackle a lot of that in the documentary, correct? You're oh, gonna it's going to be uncut, man. We're going to we're going to let it all air out. It's going to we're we're going to rewrite history. We're right. going to show every single one of these pieces of evidence that I've uncovered, uh, you know, through the parts I've actually purchased under the table from retired detectives and, and law enforcement officers. We're going to we're going to rewrite history here, man. We're going to let the people know the truth. Something, and the family the family's going to get answers. Something else interesting. Um and Alex is aware of this, is that there was a huge pedophile ring that was operating in North Fox Island, which is right where the Oakland County child murders were taking place as well. Mm. Mm. So um, he it, it is very is very a very, very high possibility that he was committing these murders in these places where pedophilia was rampant the way it was to actually bring a spotlight on to what was going on with the because when you when you especially when you get into the pedophile ring that was operating in North Fox Island man there's some big names that was connected to that right Oh, there was huge names, man. And, and and some of that even links back, I believe, to the Centerville writer when they started terrorizing, you know, the people down there and they got the coroner's name out as far as being a pedophile. Mm. Um, you know, and the superintendent of the school. There's always like I said, it's if you trace it back, it's unbelievable the amount yeah. of connections that you find. Yeah. I mean, it's just like one long story. Right. So, and and it's and it's sad to say <laughs> because people lost a lie, but um, to them, it's almost a like a validation that they're even exposing any of this stuff, and 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 it's just crazy because people did lose their lives and they were torturely tortured after this, though. So it's a game. They called yeah, it a game, a game. man. Yeah. It, they called it the game. That's what yeah. they did, and yeah. and it, and I mean, it, a lot of people have endured a great a great deal. Yeah. So listen, I really appreciate both of you coming on for me for part Hold two. On. As, as respectful, we, we couldn't get into a lot of the stuff and still we're dropping Jews and gems to everybody. Oh, I got one for you, man. I told you I'd give you, I'd give you a shot heard around the world, right? Uh -huh. And some of my associates may disagree with this, but I'm going to put it out there. Now, I'm not going to give you, look, I'm not going to give you the, the complete solution to this, but I'm going to help all those web suits out there that are following us and you know people like yourself. Everybody's aware of the, um, the 340 cipher. It's never been solved, right? Yeah. Um, well, I, I solved that uh, two years ago, just to let you know. Right. You know, Dave uh, Orenchak out there has been working on it for a few years. And he's pretty probably part of the apex as far as the cryptographic community. Um, as you're aware, the, the cipher, when it breaks down, there's a connection in the middle of it. It's got two minus signs. It looks like this. Mm. If, you were, if you were to cut it out, it's a perfect T, okay? You mm. drop the bottom line off. This line right here, okay? This line says... I'm going to let you read. I'm going to give you a little clue here, guys, and I'm going to let you solve the rest of it. Bottom line says my name, Zodiac symbol, the word Zodiac and KL, which was actually in the original key that they sent as the concerned citizen for the 408. The client sent that in. He hit this little KL in the very top right corner, and the FBI didn't understand why it was there. Right. It also included in the bottom, all right? You're going to take this part of it, and I'm going to tell you why you do this. This is his crosshair that he put in his um, – his Halloween card. That was the clue there. By night, by gun, by fire, by rope. Mm -hmm. All right. This says here, if you read it from left to right, it says all my slaves wait right here. Okay. As you go down, it says until paradise comes. All my slaves wait until paradise comes. Okay. Now, the four pieces you got left, they're all equal size. This is going to be the last piece I'm going to give you guys for all you people out there that want to solve it. Okay. They're all equal four pieces, okay? The clue is, is that there's periods in each one of them. One, two, period. One, two, three, period. The other one's got two and one. That's his way of giving you the sequence, people. If you, if now I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the rules of the game. You guys out there, you solve this too. I already sent, I already connected and sent it back to me, so I got verification. I was the first one to solve it. But um, take what I just gave you. Use the periods that are actually located in each of the quadrants, all four quadrants. He, they're numbered. There's zero, one, two, and three. That's the sequence. Go ahead and figure it out. You guys use it. It's a multiple substitution. All right. When you get it, post it on the uh, Zodiac connection. I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. All right. So make, sure you, make sure you go to the Zodiac connection. Give them the page again. 
It's the Zodiac Connection group on Facebook. Right. We also have a page called This Is Unveiling the Truth. Zodiac, um, right. Yeah, the truth behind the Zodiac and the Ad Kid murders, is it? That is correct. It's unveiling yeah. of Ad Kid, the Zodiac Connection is, is right. the exact it. term of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and thank you uh to to Victoria um for what she was saying in the comments because she was telling people to share this. You know, we need um right. as much interaction um uh, online. What people have to realize is that this is not only about Wayne Williams, this is about bringing justice to the families who lost their loved ones and not only Atlanta, uh, Washington, D.C. Correct. Um, San Francisco, Oakland Detroit. County. Yeah. Yeah. These, yeah I mean, every all, they deserve all answers. Over, all over the nation, really. Takes our right. camera. You and know. if you guys can help us out with the GoFund, we opened up the GoFundMe on here and we posted right. it on the connection. I mean, we've been we've been pocketing the uh, the bills. We've been paying for the flights and the uh, you know the room and board here, gathering this right. information. Uh, we did right. open it up. It's not it's not much. I think we capped it off at five grand. You know, and that'll actually, if you read it, it'll tell you what it'll go towards. But anything yeah. you can donate, you know, we'll make up the difference. But anything you can put in there, a piece of the pie to help us out, so that we can get this documentary out to you guys and let you guys actually see all the evidence. Not just with on, you know, the, the group and, and what we're showing here, because it's going to blow your mind. Yeah. I mean, when we right. release all this, it's going to rewrite things. Right. So make sure you connect to the websites. There's GoFundMe pages on there. No um, donation is too small. No donation is too large. Something will help right. out. We're going to promote it on our end. So once again, this is part two. And I really, really appreciate you guys um, taking the time with us to get into information as you was dropping gems and and um we we are fortunate to benefit from that because like we said before these families need closure and they need i'm gonna let everybody go i'm gonna let everybody go again but their family no. needs closure and we really we really um thank you two guys for taking this initiative because like you said it's just not about wayne williams it's about a lot of other cases that can be solved so on that note we're going to let um, Clove and Mark, we're going to have um, Dwayne go first with Clove and Marks and um, a few things right. that you're going to leave off with. All right. I just wanted to add to what Alex was saying a minute ago when he was saying, when he was showing the ciphers and he was saying what he was saying about uh, the slaves in paradise. You know, that's actual a real thing that people who are into all of this type of sick stuff with pedophilia and different things of that nature, they think that if you kill a child and um, you anally penetrate the child and you kill them in a way, it makes them your slave in the afterlife or in quote unquote paradise. And um, people who have these beliefs and they get into all of these different ritualistic things um, is connected to uh, an ancient story of Zeus and um, Ganymede. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, it's, it's real deep stuff. And I, you know, I'm saying that to say like uh, what people have to realize is how extremely, extremely intelligent these guys were and how much uh how well read and well studied oh, yeah. they were the guy spoke multiple languages study higher I my hands full, man yeah, yeah i mean it, 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 it might probably my hands full. you know so yeah. um for 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 this guy mr baber to have figured all this stuff out that he's figured out like this dude is really like neo in the matrix <laughs> listen i was going to go to a few videos i went to some videos and i listen i i, I speak truth the name of the show is some of these videos just foolish and wait i don't fell asleep on half of them but all of these experts are Oh, we solved it now. And at the end of all of these shows, they still haven't solved it. <laughs> so it's just a waste of time for them to, to show you how smart they aren't. <laughs> and <laughs> Alex is solving all of this stuff with half probably the technology that they have with just common sense and intellect um, because he's a very intellect person. So uh, we appreciate you. And, you know, these they need to bow down to you. 
Um, nah, man, I'm a nobody. This is about the families. It's about yeah. the people, the innocence that was taken. That's all it's about, well, man. I appreciate life. the love. Look, I appreciate the love. I, I really do. You know, but well, I way you can attest to this. You got people getting paid six figures to solve this stuff and not solving nothing and still got jobs in 50 years retiring, living right. in paradise and ain't solved nothing. And you're just chilling there, just solving stuff. So that, that's all right, man. I was I was born with a gift. I mean, I'm not a religious man uh, these days, but I believe that, you know, it's, it's reasons things happen for reasons, man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, and I apologize. I didn't, you know, in 2007, when he initially contacted me, I, I couldn't put my family uh, right. in danger. Right. But And this you know. is what I tell Mr. Baber about all this shit all the time. Hey, he got involved in law enforcement Alert. or, Alert. you know, took another path. He wouldn't be able to be in the position that he's in now. He wouldn't have the That's freedom right. to be That's able right. to do what he's doing now, you know, because he, he very well have, could have been like the star uh investigative guy and got some sort of profiler job or whatever and he could have very well had a superior come to him and say hey buddy you need to stand down and you won't have a career <laughs> right Are we, uh, one thing he does uh, need you need your own show though yeah uh, well you know what we're working on that i've been you guys have been people have been pressing me for that they want me to, to bring up my own podcast and you know bring people like you onto my show yeah. so that we so we can communicate and that's something that's in the works you know we just opened up the uh the business uh to make it legal like um you know the uh cold case consultants of america mm -hmm. right. it's uh cccoa uh, dot us um, is, is going to be the websites going up, but that is the domain that we purchased. We're going to, we're going to make it legal like here just to make sure that uh, all of our asses are covered. Um, and that, you know, when this, when this gets, uh, cut and released to the public and exposed, there's going to be people that aren't going to like it. There's okay. going to be people out there are going to have to take it on the chin and they're not going to be happy about it. And you know, we got to make sure that we cover our asses. Right. So you know, we're here. Yeah. I'm willing to look. I'm willing to take a thump for the families, man. I'm willing. I'm willing to take a shot, you know, yeah. just to make sure they get what, what they deserve and get answers. Okay, so um, on that note, we we gotta we gotta close out because I know you guys absolutely are busy and everything. But listen, I, can I ask y'all a favor? Absolutely. Before we leave, I need another gym, whatever it is. I just need another gym. <laughs> okay, I, I <laughs> so let Dwayne go first. All right. I'm going to let him go first. I'm going to bring, bring real quick. I'm going to bring Dwayne back, though. And we need to talk about these san satanic rituals and also the restaurant where they eat humans in California. We need to get <laughs> on that. We need to get on to that. We need to talk about that, too. But go ahead. Um, okay, Alex, go first. Go first. All right, I'm going to shoot you one because this is, you know, the Zodiac's my department here with the connections and whatnot. There's a, uh, a card that he sent. It's called the Dragon Your Ass card. It's a, it's a miner sitting on a dragon, man. And uh, they always assume that uh, he was tied into the uh, the Rodriguez or Domingue, excuse me, Dominguez and Edwards murders um, from 1963. But he never openly stated that you guys go pull up the card online. Look in the, the boot, the front left boot of the miner. If you turn it sideways, you'll get your answer. Okay. All right. He, he acknowledges the murder 1963 right in the boot, man. And I actually went and, and purchased the original card to make sure it wasn't in there. It wasn't. He actually covered up the strings and wrote the 63 in there. Uh, so, you know, that's a clue, like I said, that, that people didn't know until I, I came into the picture. But, yeah, he always he always ties shit in, man. So go ahead. It's your turn, Dwayne. Um, I think uh, something that's very important for uh, people to know about what took place is that um, – Rest in peace to Special Agent Gilliland from the FBI. Um, he was actually the only person from the FBI that was out there that night on the bridge. And yeah. um, he actually didn't appreciate what happened because he knew that everything that took place that night on the bridge, as far as how it got brought to the public, was a lie. So, um, Special Agent Gilliland mysteriously died in a helicopter crash. Mm. And most people don't know that about the case. Like most people don't know the anomalies like that that actually took place. Mm. Wow. wow. So yeah, just I, lost. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for your time. And I love y'all both really from the bottom of my heart. Hey, what much love, Drew. 
Yeah, we do. We appreciate you, man. We appreciate you giving yeah. this opportunity to put this out here to the public. Yeah. You know, we, we want to thank D, man. D, I know you're out there and you can hear me. We, we want to say thank you. Uh, yeah, we, we want to appreciate thank everything. You all too, and we appreciate it, though. But you got we, we'll, we'll connect again. Don't worry. Later down the road, this, this is just the beginning, guys. Once right. we get this documentary up and running and exposed, we'll come back on the show and we'll, we'll touch in on, on some of the stuff that we release to the public. Okay. So that sounds fair good. enough. Fair yeah. enough. So good night. All right, my brother. Appreciate you I appreciate you, man. Good night. Much love. All right. All right. right. Peace. Peace.